A popular festival in Dixon celebrates 60 years, how holiday celebrations continue through the weekend. Plus, new sounds on the track, NASCAR's first look at a futuristic way to race. And a friendly competition between Rockford's first responders is back, the fire department and police department competing for a good cause. Live from WTVO 17, this is Eyewitness News at 5. Good evening, I'm Rian Weil. Thanks for joining us tonight. Dixon hosted its 60th Petunia Festival this weekend, with today being the last day. And to end the festivities, a parade filled the streets. The festival itself consisted of a carnival, live music, lots of food, and Petunia history. Organizers said crew members spent a lot of time pulling old photos and information from over the years to celebrate the past 60 years. One festival board member, Stephanie Watson, said that people from all over come to Dixon for this festival, and the community looks forward to it every year. People from all over the area, all over Illinois and all over the country that come here, people that have moved away come back specifically for the festival during the week. So it's just huge. It brings lots of business to the area people, which we love. They get to enjoy the beautiful riverfront that Dixon has put together for us. So it's as a community event, it's been amazing. Watson said the best part about the festival is that they try to change it every year, whether it's parade floats or events, and that's what keeps people coming back. And grilling out for a good cause. A Rockford business hosted a post-patriotic cookout yesterday, serving up burgers and taking donations for the Wounded Warrior Project. The project is a nonprofit for veterans and active duty service members, providing mental health and career counseling, long-term rehabilitative care, and advocacy. Employees with Kegel Harley-Davidson organized the event as a way to celebrate veterans in the area. They provided food and said the event was a great way to raise money and celebrate the holiday. We figured let's have a cookout on the 6th, and this time we're raising money for the Wounded Warrior Project because Adam Sandoval is coming here um, later this month. And his whole convoy, what they do is they raise money for the Wounded Warrior Project. They ride all around the country. I think this year they're doing 30 dealerships. Last year they did 120. We're raising money for that. Gaston said plenty of veterans came on motorcycle to enjoy the food and that the motorcycle community is especially close to veterans, which made this the perfect opportunity. And NASCAR, in partnership with an electrification company, ABB, unveiled its first electric race car this weekend in Chicago. The $1.5 million prototype hit the Chicago street course this morning. The vehicle is similar in size, with twice the horsepower as the current gas guzzlers. NASCAR driver David Reagan is the only person who's driven it behind the wheel. He said that it has a different feel, and after multiple laps, his ears weren't ringing. Without fuel, pit stops may look a little different. Reagan said that the EV racing may be in the near future. Standing out in the fan zone and, and seeing all the young, you know, boys and girls come by and, and look at it. I mean, that's their future, you know, when, when they're 16, 18, 20 years old, getting their license, there's a good chance they're going to be buying an EV car uh, in 10 years. Though EV racing is years down the road, Reagan said it is a great way to gauge the fan interest. And looking ahead, Battle of the Badges begins tomorrow and runs through Friday of this week. Stateline first responders go head-to-head -head in a friendly contest. The competition between Rockford's first responders benefits the Rock River Valley Blood Center. Anyone who donates this week can pick either police or fire. And on Friday, whichever department has the most blood donations will be declared the winner. Fire won it all last year after police had taken the previous five years. Those who wish to donate can go to either the Downtown Donor Center or the Perryville Donor Center. And the new Cardio and Strength Center at the YMCA of Rock River Valley is ready to open. This was a part of a $3.1 million investment, which aims at adding just over 9,000 square feet of cardio and strength training space to the north of the existing wellness center. The CEO of the Y believes this additional development will improve the community's health overall. Employees will be cutting the ribbon at 5 a.m. tomorrow and will be celebrating throughout the day with fitness challenges and prizes. An empty field on Rockford's east side could be redeveloped. At Rockford Council tomorrow, the committee recommends approval of a permit to build a senior complex on Garrett Lane, behind the Target and Home Depot. Three years ago, a developer had asked for a similar complex, but it never happened. Neighbors in the area, including Midway Village, spoke out against it, worrying about the amount of traffic. This time around, the development will include 240 apartments, a clubhouse, and a three-storied assisted three-story assisted living memory care facility that would have 136 beds. The approval requires 10 votes. 
And later in the week, the Rockford community is invited to an open house to learn more about the progress and plans for Davis Park. On Wednesday from 5.30 to 7 p.m., residents are invited to stop by Embassy Suites to talk one-on-one -on -one with the city team and design professionals, as well as view a 3D model of the proposed design. Mayor Tom McNamara says the goal is to make Davis Park a destination that is constantly active throughout the year by developing it as a neighborhood city amenity and a regional attraction all in one park. The Democratic Party finds itself in turmoil. Coming up, President Biden held two campaign events in Pennsylvania today, but Democratic lawmakers are telling him to step aside. That's next. Our temperatures warmed into the 80s for many of us, even though we were dealing with scattered thunderstorms throughout the afternoon. I'll let you know when we continue to see more of that activity moving through the region as well as when we could see some dry time again coming up in your most trusted forecast a little later. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team with Rianne Weil, Drew Collins, and meteorologist Jordan Wolf. A Texas meteorologist is preparing his house for the tropical storm barrel. A meteorologist in Corpus Christi shared how he was protecting his home from wind damage yesterday ahead of Hurricane Barrel's expected arrival. Footage posted by National Weather Service lead Tyler Castro shows an electric hurricane shutter coming down over his front door. He wrote that you can't be too safe and clarified the shutter had a manual option in case of a power outage. Barrel was forecast to make landfall as a hurricane tomorrow morning on the mid to upper coast of Texas, according to warnings by the National Hurricane Center. And President Biden held two campaign events in P Pennsylvania today. With four months until Election Day and just weeks until the nominating convention, several Democratic law lawmakers have already called for the president to step aside, and that number could grow. The president made his first stop today at a predominantly black church in Philadelphia. ABC's Paro Russell has the story. If Jesus could get out of the pit, President Biden is coming back. Confidence and support from the bishop at this church in Philadelphia Sunday. President Biden attending services and speaking to churchgoers as he hits the campaign trail this weekend, looking to reassure voters and some members of his own party he's capable of serving another four years in the White House. We're all imperfect beings. We don't know where or what fate will deliver us to or when. What we do know is that we can seek a life of light, hope, love and truth, no matter what, we can seek that life. Concerns began growing after Biden's dismal performance in last month's presidential debate. Biden sitting down for an exclusive TV interview with ABC's George Stephanopoulos, hoping to quell some of those concerns. It was a bad episode. Uh, no indication of any serious condition. I was exhausted. I didn't listen to my instincts in terms of preparing and, and a bad night. The president asked how he will feel if he loses to Trump. And if you stay in and Trump is elected and everything you're warning about comes to pass, how will you feel in January? I feel as long as I gave it my all and I did the goodest job as I know I can do. That's what this is about. Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff telling NBC that answer concerned him the most. This is not just about whether he gave it the, the best college try, but rather whether he made the right decision to run or to pass the torch. So far, at least five Democratic lawmakers have called on the president to step aside, and that number could soon grow. ABC News has learned Senator Mark Warner is working to get a group of Senate Democrats together to discuss the situation. Democratic donors also speaking out. Mega donor Netflix co-founder Reed Hastings saying Biden is unfortunately in denial about his mental state. He needs to step aside to let a vigorous Democratic leader be Trump. Perry Russell, ABC News, Washington. Well, we had some rain and some sun today. Meteorologist Jordan Wolf is in next to tell us what weather we can prepare for this week. Forecast from meteorologist Jordan Wolf. We had a couple different rounds of thunderstorms move through the area throughout the earlier part of the day today and now still a few scattered thunderstorms off to the south and east. The initial line came through throughout the middle morning and early afternoon and this ended up actually laying down an outflow boundary to the south and that became the focus of the additional thunderstorm activity that is still going on for many spots down to our south and to our east. However, most of us in the state line have since cleared out and a few minor updrafts were trying to go up to the north and west. 
but we're not allowed to with a lot of the drier air and still some warmer air in the lower levels that almost cut them off. But we still at least hold on to a chance for a couple of scattered thunderstorms here late into the evening and especially once we get toward the overnight hours. Not a whole lot ongoing, but we are dealt with the overcast skies that we see in Rochelle. Not a whole lot of activity there with as far as rain falling either, but the temperatures there are a little bit on the cooler side, down to 73 degrees, including 71 in DeKalb. Meanwhile, we're in the 80s to the north, 81 in Rockford, 82 in Janesville, 79 Freeport, and 80 degrees in Monroe, Wisconsin. Weather watcher Terry in Genoa, back in the 70s, 73 degrees, 69 for his dew point, winds out of the southeast around 7 miles per hour, and two-tenths of an inch of rain for him. We, again, maintain the chance for a couple of scattered chances for thunderstorms here into the late part of the evening and even early overnight hours. Down to 66 for the overnight low, pretty similar to where those dew points currently lie. Scattered storms mainly early into the overnight, but eventually drying conditions as we head toward early tomorrow morning. Unfortunately, it does not last very long as we once again have widely scattered storms returning for tomorrow. Temperatures returning back to around 80 degrees. This will be along a slow moving cold front that will sweep through the area during the earlier part of the day tomorrow. Initially, though, we will see that warmer advection thunderstorms developing here into the night tonight. A few pockets of some thunderstorms, but mainly widely scattered showers. A chance early tomorrow morning, but we do have some dry hours for the afternoon, followed by the return of, again, those widely scattered showers and storms once we get into the afternoon and evening hours. I do think that we will see a bit more than what Futurecast has suggested, but mainly going to be seeing quite a few dry hours even during the afternoon there as we head into Monday afternoon and early Monday evening. Now we have to turn our eyes to the south and into the tropics, where now Tropical Storm Barrel is still making its way up toward the coast of Texas, going to be making landfall likely as a Category 1 storm. But if we look at the future track of this storm, it actually ends up coming fairly close to our region as we head toward the later part of the week as a tropical depression, much more weaker than what it will be making landfall as, but nonetheless still could bring some heavier rains our direction. Futurecast Extended does show that next round of showers moving in as we head toward Tuesday night and Wednesday morning, the heaviest of which is going to remain off to our south and to our east, but some of our southeastern counties may end up picking up multiple inches of rain if we see some of those tropical bands of rain working their way closer to the region. We may have to watch the potential for flooding in some of those areas that pick up some of the more heavier bands of rain, but nonetheless it will be at least bringing more overcast skies in that Tuesday to Wednesday time frame before we start to clear out toward the end of the week. Scattered storms for the next few days, isolated storms early Tuesday, but then barrels moisture brings us some of the more widespread rain showers Tuesday night into Wednesday before we dry out for the end of the week. But that also does come with temperatures back close to 90 degrees a week from now. All right, thanks, Jordan. Well, Scott's in next with sports. He'll show us how the Cubs and White Sox did today, and he'll tell us which of their players will be headed to the All-Star Game. Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. Cubs pitcher Hayden Wisniewski is like a box of chocolates. You never know what type of performance you're going to get from him. Well, today it was a pretty darn good one against the Angels. He pitched six and a third shutout innings. The star with the bat was Michael Bush. In the seventh inning, he smoked a Matt Moore pitch for a two-run home run. That's Bush's 11th, and that put the Cubs up five to nothing. Three relievers followed Wisniewski to the hill to preserve the shutout. Hector Neris finished up. With this strikeout for his 12th save, and the Cubs won five to nothing. They take two out of three from the Angels. The White Sox wrapped up their series in Miami. Andrew Vaughn got a hold of one in the first inning, but Jazz Chisholm Jr. had just enough room to make it a very long out. In the fourth inning, Danny Mendick put some muscle into this swing. That one does leave the yard. Mendick's third homer put the Sox up two to nothing. Bottom of the ninth, they're all tied up at four. Michael Kopech. Facing former White Sox Jake Berger, and it's a Berger bash. We know he's got power. That's a walk-off three-run homer. Berger's ninth in the season, and the White Sox lost to the Marlins 7-4. to four. Hey, we're going to see White Sox ace Garrett Crochet at the All-Star Game in a little over a week. He is one of the starting pitchers named for the American League today. Crochet leads all Major League pitchers with 19 starts and 145 strikeouts. He's allowed only 23 walks. This will be his first All-Star appearance. And the Cubs will have a starting pitcher at the All-Star game. Shota Imanaga makes it in his rookie season. He has a 7-2 record with 92 strikeouts and 91 innings pitched. 
The All-Star Game will be played Tuesday, July 16th. It'll be shown on Fox 39. The Rivets were back home today hosting the Waterloo Bucks and Boylan graduate Daniel Contreras got the start behind the plate. He now plays for Illinois State. He was catching Landon Southern and Southern snuffed out a Waterloo threat here in the second with a strikeout to end the inning, leaving a runner on second. Here's Contreras at the plate in the second inning. He made contact on the first pitch, but it was a fly out to right. Contreras was 0 for 3 with a walk. Waterloo's Lucas Moore up in the third. Ropes a double into right field. Right now, they're in the bottom of the ninth. The Rivets have just tied the game. It's 7-7. Seven to seven. DeMar DeRozan is no longer a Chicago Bull. That sign and trade deal with the Kings and the Spurs was completed late last night. The Kings get DeRozan. They've also agreed to pay him $74 million over the next three years. The Spurs get veteran forward Harrison Barnes in a swap of first-round draft picks from the Kings. And the Bulls get shooting guard Chris Dwartz from the Spurs, plus two second-round draft picks. Dwartz averaged less than four points per game last season. Well, Buck star Giannis Antetokounmpo will be competing in the upcoming Olympics. He helped Greece qualify today with an 80-69 win over Croatia in a qualifying tournament. Giannis scored 23 points. And the NASCAR guys are racing in Chicago. The start of the Grant Park 165 was delayed by light rain that left the streets wet, but they are underway. Defending champion Shane Van Bergeren has taken the first stage of the race, so he remains red hot. They're still in progress with light rain falling. Uh, more in this race tonight at 10. At Sports, we'll be right back. You know, we had some pretty heavy rain. It rained on my way here, but then when I got here, it was completely sunny. Right, and that rain actually ended up producing some of the additional thunderstorms that we saw to the south. Now, things are still clearing up for most of us on the first worn interactive radar from Rockford, Glass, and more, but we maintain a chance for a couple of isolated showers and thunderstorms, especially the further north and west that you go in the shorter term as we head toward the evening hours tonight. Temperatures will fall only back down into the mid-60s. Scattered storms once again possible tomorrow, this time a bit more scattered than what we saw earlier today. Much less in coverage, that is. A chance for rain again on Tuesday. Hurricane Barrel may end up making its way closer to our way, bringing us at least some of the heavier rain closer to the region. Thanks, Jordan. That's our show. Thanks for joining us.